So we have Lewis Matthews with us, who I've known for many, many years. And how long have you known him? I've known Lewis for a few years as well, since being involved with a charity. Mm. Okay. So um, Lewis has done quite a lot of fundraising for the charity, which we've been very grateful for, and has gone to extra lengths to <laughs> fundraise. In fact, he's just been mad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was All mad right. what you did. I mean, honestly, very few people could have achieved that. And of course, I'm, I am reliving what you've done on Instagram through your page. Yeah. So, and I just think, oh my gosh, how did you do it? Um, well, for everybody that's listening who doesn't know, why don't we briefly talk about it? Okay. So, in 2020, before the world went mad, I ran 3,000 kilometres from Cape Rianga, the most northern point in New Zealand, to Bluff, the most southern point in New Zealand, across beaches, rainforests, volcanoes, mountains. Woods. Woods, everything. Um, what do you want to know about it? <laughs> well, I suppose that, uh, I, I mean, we talked about it before you even did it, and we were talking about do you, you do came you here to talk about I it. I remember a conversation that stuck with me. I was umming and ahhing about I, So I'd come up with the idea in the summer of 2018, and I told a couple of friends whilst we had a coffee. And the response was, yeah, 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 yeah. You're sure, mad. Yeah. <laughs> Almost dismissive of it. And Keely said recently, she could see it in my eyes. As soon as people were a bit dismissive, I was like, not to say bugger them, but I was like, oh, hang on a minute. Like, maybe I will. Just maybe the little bit of dismissiveness. To give you a bit of a, give you a, bit of a push to yeah. like, oh, I'll just, I'm just going to do it just to... Yeah, not to, to spy them, them or yeah. anything, though. But <laughs> and then I went away and sent. I'm very, I'm you know, I've never done anything like this. I'm very green, so I go. I'm going aiming high, and just sent a few emails out. To which I got zero response from these. You know, I'm going at big companies here, and to be fair to them, I'm just some random person who's never done anything. Going, I'm going to do this mental thing. I doubt, I doubt they even batted an eyelid at the email and just carried on, because there's n I've got no I've got no level or authority in this space. I'm an, I'm not I'm not anyone in this. So I got disheartened with it and left it till about probably the November time I would guess. I came to have dinner with you and told you about the idea and we we chatted at length about it and. I was um and and then, am I allowed to use profanities on this podcast? You this certainly an, can. You can because you know how bad my mouth is, yeah. <laughs> and we've gone from being we're not child friendly, so okay. we've decided to go away anymore. from that. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, Angie's sworn too much that we've been we've been banned. You've got the, you've got a little e <laughs> next to each other. <laughs> <an> explicit <laughs> podcast. Um, you then turned to me after probably <laughs> talking for an hour or two about it and said, Lewis. Are you going to fucking do it or not? <laughs> oh, so it's not even your profanity. It's actually Angie's profanity. Yeah, yeah, it's Angie's <laughs> profanity that I'm now relaying again. I love surprise, that. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. But it's probably exact. And I think you know how I work a little bit. And I'm a, and you just go, bring everything back to, are you going to do it? And I said yes. And I left here thinking, oh, shit, what do I do now? <laughs> You can't let Ange down, can you? But also, like, literally, what do I do next? Like, what's the next, excuse the pun, but the next step? So I went, I'll run around the res. <laughs> and then for the next three days, I could barely walk. So <laughs> by the res. How far's the res? 2.2 miles. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that was the right next step, yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally. And then... Um, I, 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 it's a bit of a blur, but I just started trying to make it happen. Um, no, you did make it happen, and you did you, start making it happen, and it was tough. Yeah, just like not to go into it now, but we are planning a new thing, um, a new challenge. Yeah, but this time I'm going into it 
there's a there's now a t- before even starting there's a team of 12 people wow wow that's not including yourself yet yeah. and so that's room to grow and the the tough part is everyone wants to go <laughs> and, oh, really? and i'm like oh no i think we can only take about five people <laughs> so it's it's chat- pulling it's people's <laughs> names out of hats then but i'm starting this one the new zealand one and we we chatted about you and dave going and it you know it, was, it couldn't really happen at the time so i'm sitting there going well, i'm training for this i've got no money and no one to go with that's a and i'm you know that's a tough place to be that's a to try have and you, figure have this have out you done like marathons or anything like that before the last thing i did like that um is something called man versus mountain which is 22 miles from Carnarvon, i think is that the right place to the top of snowden and back down again okay i got three miles in and got injured <laughs> okay and of the group sorry to laugh yeah. i don't mean that but <laughs> it's not funny but uh, but part part of me almost feels like I turn around to the other six, pe- uh, five of us, there were six of us or five of us, the others b- did barely any training. I was the one who trained. I did be- they did barely anything, muddled their way through and fi- they all finished. <laughs> and I got the DNF <laughs> along with seven other people. So there's the list of hundreds oh, of people no. that finished and I'm on the end of it. And, and uh, there is an element of spite to my friend Matt where I go, yeah, I didn't finish that, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. look what look what I went on to yeah, achieve a little bit. But um, uh, so that's yeah that that's the previous things. I, I I'm not a runner. I still maintain that today. Every I mean, time I see you, you look lame anyway. You've yeah, always, always got, got something, a, something going on. <laughs> um, so you're not a natural runner, are so you? So slight. I'm not even running at the minute, and I'm just walking around like that. Yeah. But slight. I, my 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 thoughts are discomfort literally all the time to avoid chronic pain yeah. further down the line which you know may not be true because yeah. I went and did something a bit silly didn't I and did that run and I got some chocolate knees now I think but but saying that I I understand where you're coming from because I do I mean y- I, we also know each other in a different life as well, which is you helped me with some training before I really got sick. And then when I got sick, you helped me try and get back on mm. track to get a level of fitness, really, which has been all really hard for me. And I started doing, my specialist said, go back to Pilates. When you feel that you can start doing it, go back to Pilates. And I don't know, six months have I been doing it? About si- the last six months... I've been doing Pilates every day, apart mm. from when I know I'm going to be on a horse for a long time. And then I don't, because I don't want to yeah, exhaust myself. And it's been the best thing I've ever done. So it blooming hurts every day. And I might just do 30 minutes. I might just do 15 minutes. Depends what I can do on that morning. And But it's made, going through that pain, first thing in the morning has allowed me to be so much more comfortable during the course of the day and I know that sounds really odd but it has made a huge difference yeah I think um that it, it's I think it's true yeah. <laughs> I mean I've got a whole bloody career based around doing it but it, personal trainer by the way yeah slash needs a personal trainer. slash barista slash <laughs> <laughs> that's sort of what I think is be great for this podcast is to talk about because you've got lots of different things that you do so tell us about kind of each of them so obviously we're talking about your last adventure yeah um, which clearly was a challenge and the fact that you yeah did very um, little prep to do it by the sounds of it is well, I, I did a, I did 14 months of training so like yeah, for that was, like uh, yeah yeah the, there wasn't little prep it was green prep like I'd gone into it going, and every and everything I've learned from that, I'm taking into this next one. And I and and, and you wrote a book, and you got it all filmed, and and and. But uh, so, in my mind, I'd love, and this is where I would love to end up be doing is, um, I see this as sort of more a production company, an events company, than me being an athlete adventurer mm-hmm. or something like that okay so 
for, for, this is for your the next one. Yeah, well, even that first one is oh, like okay. I've learned loads from it that that's actually probably what this is. Mm. Um, it just so happens to be that it's my body that does yeah. the effort and the running, sorry. So could you see yourself almost offering the opportunity to other people to go and do that challenge yeah. using your experience, your knowledge, your team? Yeah, I think that. there's a lots of different things that come off of it, but in my mind... If I, I I spent I spent probably a couple of weeks trying to really come up with a, a sentence that explains what this is, and it's creating and sharing adventurous stories mm. that conjure philosophical thought and committed action. Okay. So that's why I do these adventures, but it's also why we're going to take a film crew, and also why uh, a book will be written, and why. I hope to, alongside all that, do public speaking because that's the main point of all this. And I'd love that to be what I do. Yeah, I'm at the early stages of it. Even though having done something, there's so much more to it. Yeah, And um, so in my mind, we're a production company creating these adventures. And, and, and one day, I'd love to be the other side of the camera and 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 find somebody that wants to do i've had a couple of people say i'd love to like genuine you can see it in their eyes that they really want to do something like that but they don't have the means to do it mm. i was n naive enough to start and stubborn enough to finish this first one so many points probably would have been a good point to not <laughs> to stop <laughs> but the lessons I've learned from that can move it forward that perhaps in the future it might be somebody else that's doing the run. But uh, I, You're enjoying I've got the, the know I've got yeah. the know how now how to put that in place for yeah, people. Yeah. Um In fact funnily enough, we've had a guy on here called Lewis Coleman and he does um a lot of goes up lots of big hills. So like they're called Mount mountains. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and he's That's done a very that. polite way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I was in fact I had lunch with him the other day, and he was saying about feeling that this perhaps might that his next kind of adventure, which I think is in a couple of months' time, is probably going to be his last adventure up a big mountain. Mm. You know, with the big the next biggest to Everest type thing. Yeah. And I and. But I think something like that, a company that provides that kind of support and knowledge that you're talking about is a really good idea. Mm. It, it, because you go to these random places and you don't know these people. You've got no history about who these people are when you book online. Because mm. when Dave did Everest b at Base Camp, it's just some random company mm. that charge you a lot of money to do something that actually there's no recording there's no evidence that you've yeah. done it is or apart from your photographs but do you know what i'm saying there's no story to it i mean like you dave raised thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds for the charity um but yet there's no nothing memorable to show that mm. now apart from one picture i've got very vividly in my mind when they sat at the top yeah uh, but other than that there's not nothing you've got a whole book you've got a whole film you've got everything that goes with it and i think that that's just such a a reward for somebody yeah and and not just for the individual no. that d does it i mean i've had lots of not, i've had lots of people come up to me and like say that they got something from the book yeah and i i i love the statement conjure philosophical philosophical thought and committed action and when somebody comes up with me with something like, somebody came up to me and said they've, they they want to look further into the stoicism and philosophy. Yeah, yeah. Because partly, I don't think many people, I don't know, consider their own personal philosophies at all and just as they go through life. Do you see what I mean? Like yeah. how, how often do you sit down and consider what you think and why you think it and things like that? I'm the wrong person to ask that, aren't I? Yeah, and you probably yeah, do. Yeah, I do you? it every day. Yeah, and so, so do I. And But just starting that process of doing that oh, is agree. massive for people. And, yeah. and if that book can do that, then great. If it makes somebody laugh, brilliant. Yeah. 
that's just a like nice ad. if someone just went yeah it was entertaining and that's what they got perfect that's great so the i really the statement is create adventurous stories that conjure something yeah. <laughs> in a person yeah but that, that that doesn't sound so good does it but it you get my point well yeah because it, i think any book that you read whether you find it good bad or indifferent the fact is it will trigger some i read a book quite recently and actually it irritated me all the way through mm. but i made myself re read it all the way through because it was just i think it was important for me to be open minded mm. about this person's theories in life and addiction and various other bits and pieces i just thought it was really important i didn't agree with it but that doesn't mean to say she's not right no. and i'm it makes me do you know what i mean and, and i think it does make you question things and i think that's really important to do that i think reading your book makes you do that have you read it yet of course i have what did you think Cheeky. i liked it Good. i think for me i think because it was personal i know you i know the journey yeah. i know what we went through i it, i think it makes it more intimate mm. so and i and i suppose it's a bit like you reading my book if you sort of saying you read it like you said that mm. mike wouldn't read my book i i couldn't finish it i told you that didn't i i haven't finished it well mike couldn't even start it Say that again. Mark couldn't. <laughs> so I've got a piece of skin and my thumb's <laughs> irritating. It's irritating me. Mike couldn't even start it because he was frightened it was going to alter our relationship. <laughs> I, I can understand that. And I, I, I didn't, perhaps I didn't think that, but maybe I did a little bit. But I think that's okay because that's what relationships do. Relationships do alter and do change yeah as you learn and grow about a yeah person, so for sure so like yeah but there's I, a difference I, isn't there i can't put my finger on why i why i couldn't finish your book it's not an easy book to read i wasn't finding it difficult to read in in that way and i don't i can't put my finger on i need to go back and go read back it. and read it yeah. um but you i mean you can I don't understand why, so I can't expect you to understand why I haven't. But there's something that's but just making me go, hmm, hang on a minute. I don't know why. I think coming back to your theory around when you listen and you read or you watch anything like that, that kind of you are engaged with, it it can alter you in a, to a certain degree, whatever, whether that's for good or bad it doesn't matter but it alters you and it can alter your perception of people but it can also alter the perception of your own life and i think when you recognize that sometimes people don't want to go there mm. they don't want they're not ready to go there so they're not going to go there and that's absolutely fine and and whereas other people are open to go to anywhere i'm pretty open to go mm. anywhere um whereas a lot of people aren't so psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually, it can be quite tough to read something that may, I'm not saying it did, but may touch on something that you haven't necessarily looked at. It's something I, that's what, having this conversation and bringing it back to my thoughts yeah. makes me want to go back yeah. and, and, and it might bring to light why. What it was, yeah. Or it might not, and, yeah, no, and no. that's fine, but maybe... Having a child didn't help. <laughs> I haven't read a book for seven months. Well, who guessed it? And that's the thing, is it? In fact, you'll be pleased to hear that I'm going to put it on audio. So oh, awesome. So that's uh, the next plan for me. I need, I need to do that as well. Yeah. Um, I th talking of books, one of the things that got the ne next idea going, I was lying in bed and I went, what's the fucking point? Like, what is the point in me doing this? Why do I want to do this? Why do I need to th say why? And then I, s I led there and think, thought, perhaps that question itself is the point of the next thing. To not necessarily the whole adventure, but if I'm going to write something about this, I may or may not. I'm not going to force it. If, if a story, if a story comes of it, then great. Or if it if it can ask or answer questions on on that topic, then great. But I was like, maybe that's what I need to have a a focus on with with this one is that question, like, what's the bloody point? And I'm lying there going for myself. 
I'm going that that question for for some people is freeing and for some people it's probably really scary yeah um so in my in my eyes we either don't know or there isn't right mm. so the freeing side of that when i can make one up and do something that makes yeah, yeah. feels purposeful or the scared side is I don't know what's yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> you know someone help me <laughs> but that's the, but I think that's an interesting point which is somebody help me because very often people can be in that position in their life mm. mentally and do not have the capacity to say please can you help me yeah true and so therefore they're then back into the, it, it, it closes that world down doesn't it so if you're not brave enough to do what you did mm. which, which is question yourself and then go forward with that even though you don't know why you're going forward with something, mm. that actually you've then got that open mind. But somebody that is too scared to go forward will end up, can end up quite unwell. Yeah, well, that 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 question in gets bigger and it becomes, I imagine it can become repetitive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, some of your clips I noticed where you, your mindset on your, mm. on the New Zealand thing, you could, and in your book, I read it, and then, and it was like, it was tough. There was times when it was like, what's the point of getting out of bed today? Or what's the point of even setting the alarm? What's the point? What's the point? What's the point? And I know when Jill was encouraging you all the way, you are getting out of bed and you are going, mm. whether you like it or not. But sometimes when you can't do that when... Yeah, people I needed don't want those people there. Yeah, you needed those people. And there's a bit where, I think it was like day three... I was in so much physical pain. pain. Like I've never felt physical pain like it. And she could have put her arm around me and said, have a little rest and then we'll go again tomorrow. But instead she said, what did you think this was going to be? <laughs> you can tell the kind of person I like to have around me. <laughs> but she was honest and straight. And one thing we said at the start was there's no fluff. There's no whooping and hollering and cheering. It's honest do the job to the point you've got a job to do and um i worked with um a sports psychologist in the builder marcus nell mm -hmm. and what what i loved about him was it was very client-centered and guided so we developed something we called a mental toolkit and the idea of that mental toolkit was i would perform at my best if i can be as close to six out of ten on um, rate of we called it rate of perceived arousal so a 10 is ecstatic the best thing in the world like i can't believe this is happening a one is like i'm really i'm i'm, I know, I'm really dark mm. i can operate at a four a five a six a seven but i've still got to be mindful to get myself i said six because i'd rather be content <laughs> And a little bit happy than than not, um, but I had to regularly check in on what number would I would I truly give myself, and then use whatever was in my mental toolkit to try and bring me back to what would be a six. And sometimes that's self talk, which wasn't just random. It was things we how would I talk to myself. And in what situation? So sometimes it would be I'd need to be kind. And sometimes it would be, more often than not, with how I work, would be stop being a little bitch. Right? And that works. I, I, I put that down to, I reckon, <laughs> um, playing football and playing men's football from 16 years old. And that was what it was. It was, it wasn't arm round the shoulder. It was, no, no. but you could, the, the point of, if I look at that statement, that can be seen as negative, saying that. To some. To some. Whereas, to me, it's affirming that I have the capability. But you're, you, 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 It's reminding me I have the capability in a, in a strange and self-deprecating, no, no, no. not self-deprecating way. Maybe it is, I don't know. But it's reminding me that you can do this. But it's that language, isn't it? And I think that's a really important point to make is that you get into people's frames of reference rather than 
automatically assuming that you know that person mm. and you only get to know that person you get to know yourself by investigating yourself working it out what reflecting on stuff and things like that and in a sense you've done exactly what most people who've worked on themselves have done which is self-reflection finding out what is your hot button finding out what's your cold mm. button and where am I going to go forward if I need it and it, everybody needs a toolbox we actually use yeah. toolboxes at work we What's interesting is so Jill Jill um, is a form, is it was a client of mine, and she's an organizer. She's a doer. Yeah. She is a project manager, and I just turned to her one day and was like, "Do you want to? Do you want to come?" And she was like, "Out of nowhere, sort of." So she she said, "Yeah," and she I I bought I, I've I bought a load of people together for this next adventure. And one thing I've asked from her is, can she almost bullet point a list of what went well and what didn't go so well, but yeah, also yeah. how we function as a team? Because um, that's got to be really critical. When you're on an adventure in the middle of the wilderness and you've got yourself or whoever, you know, in a, a, at a point of absolute exhaustion and all of those things, you need that team to be the best they can be to be able to support you, right? Yeah, we felt like a little rogue squad because <laughs> this is the three of us. So Phil and Jill came along. Phil <laughs> Phil and Jill. Phil um he's a film film filmographer, cameraman, and I would say a gentle giant. And then you had Jill who um is like I said a project manager and organizer doer. And they were almost s s close to being a contrast of one another. So I think it would, could have been a big challenge for the two of them, like a little Top Gear challenge for themselves. <laughs> Driving a... I think they did something crazy. I can't remember how many thousands of kilometres they drove together. But they, they're quite different people. And we all have similarities and differences, but they, they, got, they had to get on. And, and, and for the sake of the team, it was good that we had... <laughs> both personalities i would say to 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 sort of keep a balance keep that six out of ten so yes i've got this mental toolkit but also that extends out to everybody the else. three of yeah. us and everyone was aware of that that wasn't something i kept to myself it was it, it was convers we could all have open honest conversations yeah. and no one hid anything which was you wouldn't be able to do it so how are you going to do your next challenge with being a dad because mm. that's got to be that's been like your middle challenge hasn't it it's yeah. being a dad and i would say i'm supporting actor at the minute in that <laughs> <laughs> mum's the uh yeah, of course. the star and um, well the baby's the star, but yeah um how that's one of the biggest parts the change the biggest differences um fortunately it won't be as long mm. um an element, one of the biggest elements and ta difficulties of the last one in New Zealand was loneliness. Yeah. It took me 40 odd days to realise it. Um, and part of the uh, link, I'm, I will get to the, to, to the point in a minute, but part of what's my personal philosophy, I take quite a bit from stoicism and, and I, I, it resonates with me and part of that was the obstacle is the way that so th the impediment to action advances action right so loneliness was the thing that I don't know if defeated me is the right word held you in back yeah so that's where I need to go that's what I need to I don't want to say conquer or combat. That's, that's the, just a net somewhere I need to spend some time d feeling that and understanding that. And um, Having a child's going to make it even harder. Yeah. So, but I don't know if this is, that, that entices it more. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And, which is, I've, that sounds selfish, I think. I don't think it's selfish at all because I think there's a, 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 a that's that point where we not reach a rock bottom, is it? But you almost reach a point of 
it is a kind of rock bottom yeah. when you're doing it because you're actually feeling all those senses that you wouldn't have felt unless you put yourself in that position. It, and and I want to go to these places. People spend the, probably spend their lives trying to avoid it. Mm -hmm. I want to. I yeah, want to go there. I appreciate that. Um, I think a lot of what makes me tick is, I think I like to help people. <laughs> but is that? And, and and the idea is, I want to understand that. Yeah, I want I to get to get grips with that, um, because I want to build this wealth of understanding and perhaps knowledge. Maybe I don't. I don't know what the right word is to then be able to, on a strong relationship basis, un try and gain, try and imagine, try and, I don't think I could understand, but try and just have something that I could grasp. I could, I'd been in a similar, not the same, but a similar situation. Or um, I would like to, I, I would like to utilise these films, books, to do, like I said, to conjure these things. and I, To do that, I've got to go to difficult places. But that's what keeps me going. And um, you do get a level of imposter syndrome with it. So to then, I sit and try and put something up online or I want to say something or I want to question something and, and, and I get to a point where I go, who am I to uh, make <laughs> ask that question? Or but isn't that about that sharing your experience rather than worrying about you know are you the right person to say it? Who else is saying it? You've been there. You've mm. you've lived it. So you're the right yeah, person. Yeah, but, to but say I think I I hear what you're saying, and I also hear what um, Lewis is saying because I think there's sometimes I feel like that too, mm. and I think part of that is about humility mm -hmm. which i don't like saying that i've got humility but i i am quite a humble that's what person. a humble person would say <laughs> sure, exactly. but, but that's the thing it's about having i don't know but i might be able to help and what if i help one person a day mm -hmm. that's one person more than i helped yesterday mm -hmm. if you, do you see what i'm saying every t and i just think that's that what what it sounds like is a you're looking for empathy with others mm. so that you can support them if that's necessary if they want that support because not everybody wants support from you but there's another side to that which is recognizing that you've got some ex life experience mm. and i think when you've been brought up in certain environments where you've that's not necessarily challenged you in any way and i don't mean that disrespectfully no, to it's you, true but it's you, comfortable <laughs> yeah it's com to get yourself out of that comfort yeah. zone then gets you into having an understanding say of people that haven't had a, a particularly nice experience they've experienced loneliness they've experienced loss they've experienced all of those other things i think Empathy is a really important part of community. It's being part of a community. And that, what we were talking about beforehand is looking at what you give to the community yeah. that you're in. And, and, and I think the scale of that changes whether it's your real close community, friends and family, yeah. where I can prob probably go have some richer detail to then filtering that out to people that read a blog post or something yeah. right yeah, yeah but that that the, the 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 depth of that may change one of the things that i'm con thinking about with it is my experience is my experience it's not the same as someone else's so to then say this is a i i, I avoid i'm really careful with the language so to say this is what it is and this is how it works and this is how it gets better yeah. is not going to be true for somebody so what i try to do is change that to be a question yeah. so um what am i trying to i'm trying to give an example um if it's linked with loneliness instead of saying this is how to deal with it or this is how i dealt with it i want to say how could this be dealt with mm. but that's that a kind of that questions is, yeah. then and, that, I, and, and that's and a basic counseling skill that mm. people are given 
very often people don't use that counselling skill, which is an open question where you're offering that to that person. For, because if I gave you all the answers as to how to resolve your problems, they're my answers, they're not your answers. Then it, they, it ain't going to work. They're not going to work on you because in actual fact, you're you and I'm me and Mike's Mike. We're all different and we all have our own way of doing things and we've got to find our own path instead of being told by somebody. And that's what Marcus did with me. Yeah. That's how we developed yeah, yeah. our uh, principles yeah, yeah. was he didn't tell me anything. He just asked me questions and we built this thing. Yeah. So I, I imagine it's... And it's how I often work with PT clients. Yeah. So they'll ask me a, que a question and I'll be so annoying and ask them one back in order for them to find an answer. Their own path, yeah. Um, and, but there's a model, I mean, the, you know, that, that biopsychosocial model that is really, really important to kind of work with, looking at that whole person, instead of just looking at, say, as a PT instructor, looking only at their physical, their mm -hmm. biological, or forgetting their psychology and their social life, you know, the fact that they might work until three o'clock in the morning and yet their appointments at eight o'clock that mm. same morning or the fact that they've got a big social life that they do drugs they drink a lot they do you know all of that you people forget that we are not ma just made up of this mechanic we're not mechanics we're not robots we mm. are human beings that have lots of different elements and the majority of the work i do with people uh, pt clients is i barely give them a coaching cue now if i've been with them for years yeah, yeah. They know what they're doing. Yeah. It's the conversations we have. Of course. And they're not just general chit-chat. No. It's going to be, have some depth to it. And um, Where does it stand? This is just me being cheeky now. Where does it stand? Because you know, I have very strict boundaries about talking about other people's business. Mm. What they tell me. It stays with me. I'm mm. like that with everybody. But where does it stand when you go along to a PT session? Say I come to you and I chat to you about something that yeah. I wouldn't necessarily want the world to know. What's the... What's the, I know you I have... I don't think there's any, like, legal... It's like... Conf you, client yeah. confidentiality. I think... I think... I, I would have... I'm pretty sure it's in something that people sign with me anyway, that I yeah. will do that. Um... I'll go home and talk about person A, and that's what I'd call them, because yeah. I'll I'll need somebody to talk to about it to yeah. to, to to get a grip with it. But Keely won't know who that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if I need to just bounce some ideas or something like that, but there's no like I think not that I know of. <laughs> Maybe I should know, but I put it in uh, my informed consent yeah, yeah. and stuff like that that. Whatever we talk about is confidential, confidential and within the realms of that. Yeah, which um, I think is so important. It's like the hairdressers, isn't it? People go to the hairdressers; <laughs> they reckon that they're most unpaid counsellors. Mm. I mean, they speak and listen to people's problems all day. They're the lowest paid counsellors. Baristas are up there now as well. Yeah, but you are. <laughs> yeah, that's a really nice segue to okay. talking about your your coffee shop. Yeah. Well, I. Strangers with Coffee in Wells. There you go. There's the plug. <laughs> <laughs> Keep playing. Oh, I didn't plug the book. I tried to run really far. Yeah. I'm good with names. Tried to <laughs> run really far, and then what's the fucking point? <laughs> um, so, it, in terms of the coffee it, and all these things, um, I'll talk about the coffee shop a bit and go back to what I was going to say is being an ideas person. And then, actually, I think having a chat with you again, Ange, at some point helped me with that. Probably. <laughs> um, and uh, so my partner was working at, Keeley was working at Sainsbury's. Got put on the management courses and after two weeks went, I don't know what I want to do, but I don't want to do this. <laughs> Which is a hard thing for a couple and a, a brave thing. So she, she went and stayed as a colleague, but wasn't happy. It's such a hard thing for both parties when somebody doesn't know what they want to do. And actually, we figured out the one thing she wanted to be was a mum. Mm. <laughs> and that that's not a career or job these days. It doesn't pay the rent either, does it? So it was 
that's all she wanted. And we dis- what we chatted about was, I don't think we should start a family until you're doing something you enjoy. Yeah. Um, <coughs> the coffee shop, Strangers with Coffee is a coffee shop we would go to every Thursday on a date in the day, afternoon. I'd have the afternoon off. It was her day off. So we'd go there every time, every Thursday. Got to know the owner and the member of staff there. And he said, he, him and his wife were moving. Just Keely want a part-time job brilliant like the release from her supermarket job to go there and i said if they're moving why don't we just if you're going to work there might as well own it so we just said do you want to sell it and that was that wow <laughs> and then suddenly we own a a few months later we owned a coffee shop wow um and then three weeks later you went off didn't you no, three weeks later oh, yeah, she was now she's doing something she enjoys. <laughs> Found out we had a kid on the way. <laughs> was it planned? Uh, loosened the rules. Okay. And we were very lucky. Yeah. Like I know some, you know, some people aren't lucky for years and years, and yeah. I won't make. Yeah. When's the next one coming? Child. Yes. Well, I tried to call her bluff and said one or six. <laughs> <laughs> And what did she say? One for now. <laughs> well, we we sort of. I don't want to. We don't want to plan it. No. We're just enjoying what you got. What we've got, and I don't think whilst owning a shop or in, unless life settles down a little bit, which just let's be honest, isn't going to happen. The way we both live our lives, so there's no plans for another child. But if it happens, it happens, and and. Um, but yeah, so the coffee shop, I initially, in those three weeks, I was never going to work there. I was just going to help out <laughs> here and there. And then nine months later, I'm there full time <laughs> whilst trying to be a PT at the same time. What? So are you going to stop PT in altogether as such? Yeah, so my it, one-to-ones are stopping. I'm still going to coach class, group group training. You can do group training. On a Monday and a Tuesday night. Okay, Monday, Tuesday night, Mike. Thanks. Monday's women only, so... That's, that's not so good, then. That's <laughs> for you. I'm not going. I can't go, can I? I can't <laughs> keep up with them. Um, so, yeah. But that's... Part part of doing that is then adjusting and, 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 and realising what that allows us to do. Yeah, so yeah, actually yeah. being there is going to allow Keely to stay home with Phoebe and go and do things with her. And for me to actually have a weekend, like, I've, yeah, I've yeah. had... No weekend for seven months. So that allows that to happen. So as a family, we get to do things. and. So will somebody else run it on a Saturday and Sunday for you? uh, So I'll have Sunday, Monday off. Oh, right, brilliant. Monday night. No one does anything on a Sunday night after they've eaten a Sunday roast, do they? Do you have a a Sunday roast every Sunday? Not every Sunday. Most Sundays. Most Sundays. Do you have a Sunday roast? uh, Yeah, most Sundays, yeah. Oh, no. But like, my Sunday is my Monday. Yeah. I go to work at 5.30 for two hours. Like, you can live with that. I can live with that. I'd call that a weekend, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, pretty um, much. So the shop just shuts <laughs> on a Sunday and Monday. But it allows Keely to be home with Phoebe, which is super important to us. So does she go in the shop at, in the coffee shop at all? Yeah. She's there all She's the time. She's there all the time. Yeah, I bet she is. Yeah. <laughs> Inspecting. The boss is here. <laughs> oh, the boss is here. That's what we're here. It's like, what happens we're when I come in? And uh, but what's really nice is our daughter's growing up amongst it, yeah, yeah, and seeing it. And we were chatting about uh, on Friday, Keely go- on Wednesday and Friday, Keely goes to the gym, and and this Friday I'm going to take Phoebe down there, and I mean she doesn't have a clue what's going on, but I want her to be able to see what a lot of parents go off to the gym, and I don't know if their kids really know what that is. I want yeah, yeah. her to be able to see what. Be able to look at her mum and doing some pretty cool stuff and be like intrigued by it. I'm not going to force anything upon her, but I think it's just a little insight, isn't it, into what mum and dad actually do when they go here and do that. What mum and dad actually do at work. Yeah. I think it's really important. Victoria brings the boys into work quite Mm. a lot. They love it. Yeah. They apps. I mean, they were like, they get upset if they can't go in the school holidays. Yeah. And it's like they. I mean, who wants to be in a drug and alcohol rehab? But Victoria's children do. 
They absolutely love it. And I think the clients love it too because it's part of that family mm. kind of environment and it's just good fun. Kids bring something, don't they? Yeah, they do. I, 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 I remember people used to show me pictures of their kid and I, yeah, yeah, I, I didn't... I, I didn't really care that much. <laughs> Don't admit that. And now, when people, I find out people have got a kid on the way or they show me pictures, I love it. I'm so excited for people. I love looking at the pictures. I get it now. I, I've already done it to you two. <laughs> you did as soon yeah, as you arrived. So you walked in, I was like, I'm going to be the doting place. dad. Like. Yeah, but I, 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 do you, what, you haven't got kids or stuff. So how do you feel about that? Are you the one that goes, oh gosh. Are you like Lewis um, used to be? Uh, it's okay, Mike. <laughs> He's not going to be offended. <laughs> um, probably 50 50. So, friends that have recently had children, I love I love looking at the photos and little videos and stuff. I think if it was every five minutes or every yeah. day, it might be a bit over the top. But Do you send gifts to people who have babies? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I see, and I can imagine that. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, oh, yeah, I can imagine you being quite excited about that, even though you haven't got your own kids. Yeah. I, I love it. I think it's brilliant. I was too selfish and just didn't care. <laughs> 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 Another picture of a baby. They all look oh. like Winston Churchill to me for a bit. <laughs> I, buy, I buy very weird gifts. What do you <laughs> buy? <laughs> My friends who recently had a baby, I bought them a tumble dryer. <laughs> I thought you were going to say a pack of condoms. <laughs> I think a tumble dryer is really useful for a... For well, a it is because of all the little, the little everything, little socks and, you yeah. know, all of that stuff. It's little stuff. It's a pain in the ass to dry, isn't it? It's true. You have a tumble dryer and it's easy. That's really generous. I um, <laughs> William buys them trainers. Oh, really? Yeah, so we'll go and buy them the latest trainers. That's pretty and, cool. Yeah, that's so cute. That's, that's quite a good one to buy. It's a, It's been... Like, I couldn't imagine it and... and it's added something to all the things we want to do, you know, added another element. And like you were saying earlier, ha what has it done? And it's made it more scary. It's made it uh, probably harder to do, mm. but good, better. Mm. That makes it better for me. Do you feel that, um, and I know when you're working with people in both as a PT, but also in the coffee shop, that meant, can you see the difference in people's mental health when they start to look after themselves a bit better through doing PT or indeed sitting down and just having a chat and having a coffee? Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Just actually opening up and not being that lonely person that sits in the corner with their coffee. They then start talking to you or talking to you. Yeah, Kiwi I mean, you have an example. Someone may come in and go, I'm feeling really lonely. Mm. And they'll buy a coffee and they'll sit there for three hours chatting. Oh, and it's both sad, but at the same time, we're providing a, a, an opportunity for somebody yeah, yeah. to have a conversation. It's a, it's a balance. It's a weird one in a coffee shop because... you only got a small coffee shop as well. Yeah, You've only got and, so many seats. And that's fine. I don't mind them talking to me. But if they start... Some people go there on their own or as in a couple, and then this this person who's lonely, who, it, you feel sorry. F you don't feel sorry. You empath empathize with them, but they'll start talking to these this couple that yeah. have come along, and you're like, I feel like I what I'll do. I won't say anything, but I'll start talking to them. Yeah, I'll ask them a question to deflect them because though that couple are here for the two of them, not not. But do you you see what I mean? So yeah, no, no, I agree. But I, for, for what you were saying, I see it more in the personal training and coaching yeah. side. Um, it's tough at the shop because the shop is a brief moment of reprieve, but it, it's not fixing anything. Yeah. The, the, the stuff people are doing in the gym, perhaps... Is, is is closer to actually moving them in a better direction or them moving themselves in a better direction I should say rather than so you you can see it and um it's been quite nice somebody has actually messaged saying like I've been you get the impulses you know, is this doing any, why am I doing this and then somebody messages you saying look this is actually I'm been really uh, it's really helped to 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 listen to some of these things the things you're putting up and and I'll see them in the in the gym and 
and I can see that, for example, they would they wanted to do ninety days with no drinking because they drank too much, right? And they're like, I'm I feel so much better. I'm doing so much better. I'm I'm loving life in the gym, and I feel a bit more. I'm, I'm finding a, something purposeful to do, and the trajectory's changed from that point, and they're uti- utilizing the tool of the gym or let's just say fitness in itself to do to to help that not to do it completely but to to aid that so there's bits they're taking from everywhere um so i'll notice it there more than so 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 the to 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 part of the transition of going from peating to the shop i have to say to myself what is this doing for the community that it's in rather than yes it's providing a really good coffee but beyond that it's a little moment of joy it's a little moment of that two a a couple can have a real good conversation a little moment where someone who's lonely could come and chat so it's and eat a nice cake yeah as you two (laughs) as we two just witnessed (laughs) but it's you know i might be making it bigger out to be bigger doing something bigger than it is but that's how it helps me mm-hmm. from a selfish point of view go and do it yeah yeah well we i mean we do our coffee and chats every month and we're expanding that we expanded it into cheddar and nobody turned up mm. we've been doing it we've been paying rent every month for the first tuesday is it or the first tuesday after the last saturday Something of every like month that, yeah every month for six eight months some, yeah, I think it must be Six, coming up to months. a year, actually. But yeah. yeah, and we've been paying rent, and we've had probably no more than two people turn up, and in the last, we've had nobody come up since Christmas. Not a single person's turned up. What do you think that is? You tell me. We advertise it. We put flyers out. We put it online. We do everything. But it, and I, you do wonder what what is it that pe- and there's loads of lonely people in cheddar you know them and i know them mm. but they don't actually put themselves out and i think that comes back to your kind of starter stuff about going out of your comfort zone really to kind of discover who you are if you yeah. see what i'm saying i wonder if because of the association with the charity i assume yeah right you acknowledge if you're going to that as somebody it's, it's the first. Well, it's no, almost no, I agree with you. I agree. Trying with to trying to say they need help to cover it? up, yeah, and, and they're actually, not ready to. So, be, because it's a linked to that, could be. It's like a. It's, it just it, seems a shame, doesn't it? Such a shame because, I mean, we're going to stop it and do something different and see whether that comes about. But um, we still do it in Burnham, and we can have sometimes 150 people at Burnham. Yeah. And you know, free cup of coffee and a piece of cake. Sorry, it probably puts you would put you out of business. Really, <laughs> I don't mean that. Um, but do you know what I'm saying? It's it makes a huge difference to some people. Is it? Yeah. Well, I think the right doing the right thing by going. It ain't working. What can we do differently? We can't waste any more charity money. That's the reality. Yeah. But, um, anyway, I am aware that you've sat and talked for nearly an I hour. I can talk for ages. I yeah, know we all can, <laughs> can't we? Um, if somebody wanted to get hold of you or other than strangers in Wells, the coffee shop, where else can they find you? Probably easiest on um, Facebook and Instagram, Lewis Matthews PT. And I suppose if you want to find out more about, we didn't really talk much about adventures, no. but we'll, we'll have you back. Don't worry, you're right. coming no, back. But what I mean is, episode by the book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but or, or, or it's on there the stuff like that you know yeah. and um what we'll do is we'll add the we'll add the link to the book um into the, the youtube good. and on the podcast so nice. send it over to us and we'll and then we'll add uh, it on. maybe in a f- in the future we'll talk about the next yeah yeah that'd be brilliant i think that'd be great one. yeah we'd love to and um perhaps get a few members of the team on i think there's a few that would uh, be really good you guys to talk to yeah please yeah anybody anybody that wants to do the podcast we're always willing to have people come on we love it mm. and actually people have come forward haven't they we've had a, we've had a few people recently yeah, yeah which, which is, is really brilliant it says mike and i going through our, d- our contact contact list well, if you're ever in trouble <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll call you i love again. having a chat so <laughs> thanks ever so much Lewis. thanks really very much appreciate cheers it. guys <laughs>